everyone. Welcome to Community Report on Channels Television. I'm Victoria Ido. We'll forgive the noise on the background. It's because we are in Sabo Yaba. That's because we're talking about a community in Lagos that's Yaba as a community. Yaba is central and it's the core of what makes Lagos mainland. So there is no Lagos without Yaba. It's important to the history of Lagos State. Also in Yaba, we can find our way towards the island, that's Lagos Island, and also Victoria Island. On the borders of Yaba is Ojuelegba, Mushi, Maryland, and the likes of some of these areas. We have a sawmill in Yaba, and we're also going to look at that. It's called the Okobaba Sawmill. Welcome to the show, and Victoria Ido. Yaba, Lagos is one of the sought-after area by middle-class Nigerians for various reasons, which include security and a relatively low cost of living. The area presents an interesting outlook for many reasons, one of which is the number of communities it is made up of, such as Makoko, Onikewaya, Akoka, Sabo, Tejosho. <laughs> the vibrant academic environment also attracts a lot of people from all over the country to come study, resulting in a high population of young people within this locality. One of the major institutions here includes Queen's College Secondary School, which was established in 1927. Also here is Yaba College of Technology, popularly known as Yaba Tech, said to be Nigeria's first higher institution established in 1947. The University of Lagos, a federal research institute, started in 1962. The Tejo Show area is one of the business hubs in Yaba. It has an ultra-modern market which currently hosts over 2,000 shops on four floors. The cost of the shops ranging from 700,000 naira per square meter, which is often the reason why petty traders who cannot afford the cost of the shops are seen transacting business around the markets or hawking their wares. In spite of the busy nature of some of the residents here, health consciousness is of great importance to them. They usually come out for a monthly dance and exercise classes. This is the side that seemed to accommodate the young at the hold and they seem to enjoy it thoroughly. When I started the exercise I was about 92 kg. I'm now down to about 84 and I intend to go down to 75. But most of it was exercise and um, I was prompted into this for, because of health reasons. Doctors say we need to exercise, we need not, we sit down too much. So we need to exercise and um, the importance of exercise cannot be overemphasized. Most of the illnesses that we have, is it diabetes, uh, heart failure and all that, it's because of the kind of life that we live. We sit down most of the time, those of us that do 9 to 5, no exercises and we don't eat healthy. I joined the community here 
This is Akiomi, opposite uh, Four Square. It's been uh, one of those old communities in Yaba area. We have a lot of um, large families here, having old, older members of the society. What we are here for today is um, every month, work for fitness. We, we meet here every month, and for me, this is the first time I'm coming after my retirement. You can imagine just last week I was retired, and um, I've, I've benefited a lot this morning. I can feel it in my body. We did uh, a lot of uh, gyration, a lot of dancing, and we walked from here to Yimbo and back through Sabo, Yaba. For the communities here, especially the older women and men, this program is free for them because it's for them in this community. Well, the doctors will tell us that without even medicine, when you exercise your body every day, the pharmacist will not be able to sell. You don't need to go to the doctors. You have those things in your body that should work with other parts of the body will have been energized. That's the essence of exercise. The initiator of the program shares his reason for bringing this community as well as some tips. The fitness initiative uh, is, uh, is started because of uh, what we've noticed in our community. Our immediate community, we have elderly people that are over some time now, we discovered that uh, because of uh, lack of uh, fitness uh, programs, they've been either using uh, supplements or things to so, uh, augment their health. So, and uh, what we've been doing, our uh, initial uh, main business, is uh, we will focus on the youth. Then we now felt that leaving the adults out is not the best. So one of the main reasons for starting the, the fitness work program. Then we went on and then the, 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 the adults in our community really embraced it. And then this is why the fourth one is uh, uh, coming up this time around. And we now feel that we want a situation whereby all the adults, we can take them together and make this thing more frequent. Because right now we're doing it on a monthly basis for the adults. We take them on a road walk. Uh, like uh, the one that we had today is about 7.5 uh, kilometers, which everybody really enjoyed. Then after, what we do is uh, advise them on what they should eat, how they should eat, their sleeping and things like that. Those are what we where all our, the initiative is all about. We know this society is either we're taking Okada or a, a, you, you're always behind the steering. So what we normally tell them is that if you're going to a church and you're giving a car park, you try to park a little bit further away from the church so that you can just throw a, about 10 minutes walk on a Sunday, you do a lot. And then when you finish the service and you're back, that is uh, one tip. Another important thing that they can do is uh, most, uh, they can, uh, if they have to go and visit their friend, they don't have, they can use, uh, see the ones that have a staircase. So they walk up, up the staircase so that uh, they can burn uh, more of the fat. Uh, basically on food, we don't uh, restrict. We don't because they are elderly, they need all the nutrients. So we don't restrict. So we we tell them about portion, the importance of portion. And then another thing is that uh, we only ask them to cut down on their sugar intake, but they can, uh, if they need to have sugar, they can take it in form of uh, uh, fruits, and then they, they should have uh, vegetables. Ideally, if we want to tell them, we said, if you have a plate, imaginary plate, half of it should be fruits and veg, then the other half should be any other thing that you want to have. With formal educational institution abound everywhere in Yaba, our searchlights today focuses on the wood business, which is very massive in the Ibutimeta axis of Yaba.
It is a workplace with over 5,000 men and women carrying out different functions and operating at different stages of the wood business. This place is made up of different wards. The sawmill business here is believed to be seated for over 90 years. It started around about 90 years ago. Then it was manual. It was manual sawing. I think an issue of a machine, this mechanical something came in about 55, 60 years ago. And they start with a few numbers of machines. As of today, it has already enlarged. Enlarged to the tune about, about uh, 200 and something machines. That is for the bounce machine, the one that saw the locks. It's roughly about 200 and something. Currently. There are several other bodies here providing support services from the log operators to the Road Transport Association. Some of Somila, some of our members who are Somila, they play dual roles. They have their logs, they saw by themselves and they make decisions. So it's just a, a business that we run hand in hand to, with many other associations, many other associations. Because when I say many, we have other associations that, uh, like timber contractors, those ones, they specialize in bringing in woods, bringing in logs, either by organizing it, but that is their own role. Though it's not compulsory that they should be the only uh, people that brings in wood, but they have the association that take charge of wood locks when they are named from bush. And some saw me like too, they go ahead to the forest and make the business, have some people to work for them, they hire some people to work for them. They finance the people and they bring the wood down. The same thing, soya. So the work was so interwoven that you cannot really separate the activities, the activities of one from other. The one that stands out is the sawmill. If you are a some, you are, if you are owner of a sawmill, you are a sawmiller, and you automatically belong to that association. And they are permanent. They are the ones that are on ground here. The soyas, they are permanent partially. Because you can be a soya today, you can migrate from soya to become a sawmiller. As well, you can do the job for some years and decide to leave. But why we normally refer to sawmiller that they are permanent is that if you have a mill, it's a firm. This formula we are talking is we have individual firms that forms that formula association. So if you have your factory, unless you dispose the whole factory, you are still member there. So you have your, your, your tangible assets there that you cannot do away with. Statistics of revenue generated here is not readily available. This is largely because this is an open market made up of individual firms or sawmills. You see, this is an open market. Sawmill, Okobaba sawmill is open market. Open market is the sense that there is no restriction. Any human being at all, if you need one piece of plank, you are free to come in. If you need 100 trailer, you are free to come in. There is no restriction. 
there's no um, distributor rights or mm -mm -mm -mm. I will sell to the person that needs 20 trailers and as well sell to somebody who need just single plank. So it's a free you can they they put everything together, either wholesale or retail. According to wood merchants, Okobaba sawmill has been here since the 1930s and has grown exponentially over the years with little or no support from the government. Let's learn more about the market. Before we export many of our woods, why others are used locally? But locally, not in Lagos alone. We have the Nontana, we have the Eastern. Eastern people that came in, they came with their trailer to come and load to all parts of all parts of Nigeria, to all parts. No part of Nigeria that Okobaba saw me who doesn't go to. But the consumption in Lagos, as well as you know Lagos, Lagos is the capital of everything. Either you to call you say it's not the capital of Nigeria or this thing, but economically is the central of everything. So the construction that are going on in Lagos here alone, I think uh, is, is 10 times all other states. And all of them make use of wood. And majority of this wood comes from Okobaba Sonde. On a number of occasions, this sawmill has suffered several fire outbreaks, which is often devastating. Fire is one of major of our challenges here. And because we operate and produce sawdust, and these sawdust are highly inflammable. So because of carelessness of some of people that operate here, especially after our closing hour, because fire incidents never happens while we are on ground. But we close by seven. After seven, many people are still roaming about here. Those that smoke, those that do this, you know, it leads to the fire break here. They are also plagued with several challenges, one of which is poor funding. This has impacted the industry negatively. Then there is the issue of deforestation. For any business to thrive, they, are, they need finance. But, but to, you know, so many, because the commercial banks, they need quick money. And to loan, to finance so many in uh, business, it must, it's supposed to be on long term. And these commercial banks or whatever, whatever, they don't want to go into any long term business. They need quick money to turn over. That's another thing. But the worst part of it is what we will call alamole. We've started experiencing shortage of logs in Lagos. In Okoba, saw me here, we started experiencing shortage of logs. And this results from the, the group of people, the legal people that took hands or chain, we call it hands or chain, to the booth. They fell indiscriminately, regardless of the gut, the, regardless of the types or kind of the wood. So they normally they deforest no 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 forest that they, they operate under six months that place will be disaster. They they, they, they will change the forest to to, to, to to a savannah. On many occasions the Lagos State Government has promised to relocate them to a more befitting workplace, which is said to be over seventy percent completed. Any moment from now, the remaining part is 
completed. They have been echoing into our ear, and we are ready. We are preparing ourselves that when this place is completed, we are moving you out of this place as agreed. Yes, sir. And we are ready. And the major thing that remains there now is the road, the link road, and the, the inner roads. The timber is sourced from seven states, which includes Edo, Delta, Ogun, Bayelsa, Undo, and River states. And they often come in the length of 24 feet and are stored in a place called the bomb. Every, Every sawmill here is configured to accommodate logs of only 12 feet long. That means the services of log cutters are often needed to cut the log to size which can only be done in water. water. Next, the pullers set to bring the log out of the water and is often a tug of war which requires great physical strength. The log is then taken to the band saw which is usually carefully set up. The blade undergoes the process of filing or sharpening. While that is done with, it is then carefully placed on the band and tightened to avoid any form of accident which could easily be fatal. While the machine is certified OK for use, the part is cleared of sawdust. After which, the log makes the band saw. What the operators look forward to is getting as many plants from a log. Pieces of wood that cannot make a full plank are taken to the circular machine where they are cut to size by 2x3 by or 2x4 or 3x4. Buyers come around to make choices on how they want their products. The ones who opt for smooth planks will need the services of a plane as. Within the community, there are also wood makers that turn these planks into various items. Interestingly, most of the machines here are often fabricated within the communities. Kazim Adoti, alongside his partner, has been in this business for over 20 years. At the moment, they're rehabilitating an old bandsaw roller. He believes with better funding, it could do a better job. There is no gain saying that the fact that this place is a source of livelihood to thousands of people around Yaba and other parts of the country. 
everything needed to keep this industry going must be accorded it. And that's Community Reports for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed any part of the show, you can check it on our YouTube channel. You can also send your comments to the social media handles showing on your screen. So far, what we have gathered is that Okobaba Sawmill employs thousands of people, so the government needs to make this place more industrialized. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Victoria Idowu. Bye for now.